welcome in, a welcome back. It's a monkey mar. Before we get into today's video updates, please make sure you click that subscribe button, the bell for notifications, and of course the like. And with that, let's uh, get into it. All right, guys, I have got three updates on Briasia Terrell, Dulce Maria Alaves, and Afana Fry. Let's get into the first story. First article update I have is on Briasia Terrell. So the Davenport community members offer new reward in search for Briasia Terrell. This was published on October 28th, 2020 at a Davenport, Iowa. Members of the Quad Cities community have created their own reward for information leading to the whereabouts of missing Briasia Terrell. The missing 10 year old, and I know her birthday is coming up in December, was last seen on July 10th in Davenport, Iowa. A reward for information and finding her is already being offered by the FBI, Crime Stoppers of the Quad Cities. But now community members have created their own reward in an effort to reignite the search for Briasia. We should have never stopped asking ourselves, where is Briasia? A 10-year-old little girl who went to spend the night at her stepbrother's father's house and was never seen again. Why would anyone stop questioning where Briasia Terrell is? So Rusty Borif, the executive director and founder of 180 in Davenport, said, I was at home with my kids and for some reason she came to mind. Borif said, the idea to offer a new reward was to keep the conversation going as the months continue to pass and leads in search parties dwindled. It's tough when there's not something new and it's not necessarily just the media's job, but us as community too. It's our job to make sure that question, where is Brie Asia, is at the forefront of people's minds, he said. And I agree with him 1,000%. On Monday, Borf made a Facebook post offering 5000 for legitimate information leading to the whereabouts of Brie Asia Terrell. And as traction of the post grew, the amount did too. Others joined in and the reward now sits at $20,000. My friends and I, you know, have said, you know what, if you have information, people out there have information. Someone knows something. And you know what they say, if you see something, people say something. And sadly, if money is that thing that draws it out, whatever it takes, Borif said. And sadly enough, I agree with Borif because sometimes when you offer a reward and now that we're sitting at 20000 and hopefully that will jingle a memory in somebody and um, we'll get Briasia Terrell found. He hopes it will help encourage anyone with information to come forward and help find Briasia. Sometimes it takes someone, someone not in a uniform to bridge that gap. And that's us. We are willing to do that, Borif said. Davenport police told TV6 on Tuesday that the investigation remains open and ongoing. Resources are dedicated to the case and they appreciate all the help the community has contributed. If you have any information, you are encouraged to contact the Davenport Police or Crime Stoppers of the Quad Cities. You can submit a tip on Crime Stoppers website or contact the FBI. I am going to post those numbers below in the description. And this is Rusty Boris' post that I am going to show right now. All right, so I decided to go check in and see where Mr. Henry Earl Dinkins was residing. And he is still in Scott County. So we've got him still sitting in jail. 
And he's been sitting in there since July 10th, 2020 at 9.14 p.m. He's got no dates set. But then on 7.23, he had a no bond permitted. And then he's got this interstate charge, so which I mentioned earlier, where he has some charge for a meth something to intend to sell or he had a lot of meth so i am not sure he's got the sex offender provide false info second or sub which is the felony on 710 he's got the parole violation and he's got the interstate detainer out of illinois so he forgot to register that he was a sex offender is what they're holding him on and obviously a parole violation and in all honesty i am not sure how long they can hold him on the charges of not registering and the parole violation he also has that interstate detainer where they can come and pick him up after he is done with these charges in davenport and bring him out to Illinois to face charges for the meth. So, I truly believe that this man, Henry Earl Dinkins, might be the only one that knows what happened to Briasia Terrell since she spent the night at his house with her brother, who is the son of Henry Earl Dinkins, and only he returned home and Briasia Terrell was never seen again. I am going to reach out to Rusty Boriff and see if maybe I can have a little interview or talk to him. I would love for Briasia Terrell's mother or one of her family members to reach out to me and come and talk to me and tell me their side of the story. But of course, we don't know what the police know and we don't know what the police are saying. Let's stay vigilant. Let's spread the word on Briasia Terrell. Let's keep her in the forefront of people's minds and let's get on to the next update we are going to get into the next update on fauna fray missing woman's father continues the search if you do not know who fauna fray is she was the one in oregon who was going to bring some of her deceased brother's belongings down to one of his friends checked in the super eight she left to go stay at a more of a lodge type of um hotel for solitude and she was never seen again and her car was found abandoned which police say that the car was there for at least a month so let's get into it gallus oregon four months after the disappearance of a woman in josephine county there's still no sign of her. Lane County woman Fauna Frey went missing in June. Her car was found last month, but so far police haven't found any sign of her. John Frey's daughter, 45-year-old Fauna, was in Josephine County giving items to a friend of her recently passed brother, Dallas. And we know that her mother had passed, and we know her sister passed. So her father had her and now she is missing. Talk about tragic situations and a lot of them for one family. I can't even imagine what her father is going through. Since the beginning, I've been driving around, camping in the back of my pickup truck, said John, hours and hours of phone calls, searching. Pretty much there's no rest. I'm gonna keep looking, bless his heart. So is anyone out there in Oregon helping the search for fauna or is it just completely gone and only her father is out there searching it just i just wish that i could honestly get in my car and drive to oregon and help this man search for his daughter last month fauna's blue jeep grand cherokee was found in gallus multiple searches some involving help from outside counties were done in the area but there was no sign of fauna josephine county sheriff dave daniels said in a previous interview there were no signs of foul play when his deputies searched through fauna's car 
We always look for anything, blood, weapons, signs of a struggle, and none of that was found in this case, said Sheriff Daniel. I wonder if the car was broken down or out of gas, but I would assume, which assuming is not good, but if that was the case, that maybe they would have said something. But John believes something bad might have happened to his little girl. In all likelihood, Fauna didn't drive the Jeep up here by herself, and then she didn't abandon it, said John. And he still has so many unanswered questions. How did her car get here? Where is Fauna? said John. If you have any information, if you have any information about the case, contact the Josephine County Sheriff's Department. They did not drop that number, but I am going to find it and drop that number also below in the description. And also, like, I'm open. Any of these family members that want to come on and talk and tell their story and help spread the word, let's uh, do it. And that is all I have on the Fauna update. If you do not know, like I said, I did make one prior video on Fauna explaining and showing where her car was found, where she was going, and let's just spread the word. And if you're in Oregon, let's make sure that we keep our eyes open for Fauna Frey. Okay, last but not least, an update on Dulce Maria Alaves out of Bridgeton, New Jersey. Look at that little face. Oh, she is just so cute. But I think she is just one of the cutest little girls I have ever seen. So there's a false flyer going around. So investigators denounce false claim that missing New Jersey girl Dulce Maria Alaves was found dead. And let me say this is not the first time there was another post out that little Dulce was found dead. And don't forget about the cryptic letters, but I have all of that in my videos on Dulce. Now, people that put this crap out and go to the time to make fake flyers saying that a little five-year-old girl is deceased, you are one twisted, sick individual, unless you had something to do with it. So, this was updated October 21st, 2020. Authorities say a post circulating on social media suggesting a child who vanished from Bridgeton Park, New Jersey, more than a year ago has been found dead is false. It is fake. It's false. It's not real. It's sick. Dulce Maria Alaves was five years old when she disappeared from Bridgeton Park on September 16th, 2019. And that was when her mom sat in the car with her aunt doing homework. And now her whereabouts remain unknown. The fraudulent post is made to look like an official announcement from law enforcement. Cumberland County Prosecutor Jennifer Webb McRae issued an announcement on Facebook Tuesday night saying, The post, which includes her office's logo, a photo of Dulce, and a message indicating a press conference will be held when we know all the details is phony. So if the person by any chance, which I doubt is listening to this, who made this fake poster, you really need to go rot in hell. False information. And I'm going to go ahead and show that poster. Information like this is a distraction to the investigation and causes unnecessary grief to the family of missing child Dulce Maria Alaves, Webb McRae wrote. Posting false information under the false impression that it is comes from a law enforcement agency to cause alarm or harm to a grieving family is reprehensible anyone with information about those responsible for the fake announcement is asked to share tips anonymously with the prosecutor's office dulce was reported missing following a family outing to the park and the case has drawn national attention events were held at the park last month to mark a year since her disappearance an fbi agent involved in the case said the child was likely abducted 
and I'm going to go ahead and show that sketch right now of the man they believe that took a Dulce Maria Alves by a stranger in a crime of opportunity, though others involved in the investigation say all possible options are being considered. And I guess that takes us back to when they were saying if you come forward that you will not be deported back to uh, Mexico. So an FBI agent involved in the case said the child was likely abducted I, by a stranger of opportunity. I just read that. Anyone with information about Dulce is asked to contact authorities using one of these numbers. So we've got the Bridgeton Police, Cumberland County Prosecutor's Office, New Jersey State Police, and of course the FBI, and you can do an anonymous tip you can text to, and I am going to go ahead and drop all of that information down below. In my mind, every time I think about this case of little Dulce being kidnapped from the park while her mom sat a couple feet away, it reminds me of like when Elizabeth Smart or the other girl, uh, J.C. Uh, Duggard by that a monster, Philip Garrido. What was it, 18 years? And then also it sits in the back of my mind, the three girls that were taken in Ohio to where the bus driver, evil monster, Ariel Castro, who kidnapped Amanda Berry, Gina De Jesus, and then we had Michelle and Knight, where he kept those girls tied up in that house in Ohio for years. What was it, 10 years? I hope somebody knows something and where Dulce is, or maybe the family that Dulce is with has somebody that has seen her there. Do the right thing. Call authorities. Get this little baby girl back to her family. And that is all I have on the Dulce case. And with that, guys, I think it is a wrap. Make sure you drop your opinions, your comments. You know I love to hear them. And like I said prior, I am one person. I read the comments. I try to answer and get back to all of them between work, animals, winter coming, dogs, you know, moms. So with that, guys, I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for uh, watching. Please uh, like or dislike, whichever you prefer, and uh, subscribe. Everyone have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world, and stay uh, vigilant. I am out.